So is your car's battery draining overnight? You come to start your car in the morning and there's just not enough juice there to get it started. Or maybe it's cranking very slowly or you've only just managed to get it started, but it's quite clear that there is less current available to you. So what's happening to the charge within the battery? Where's it going? Where do you start in diagnosing this problem? In this video, we're gonna look at these battery issues and help you to isolate the problem that is causing the battery to drain overnight. So the first obvious thing we've got to look at is the condition of the battery itself. Batteries have a finite lifespan and as they age, they hold less and less charge. So there's less of a reserve. So it may be that the car naturally draws a little bit of current overnight. You're running an alarm system. There may be other electrical components within the car that just need a little bit of current in order to remember the settings and keep everything working as it was. So if the car is taking an ordinary amount of power overnight, but the battery is draining, that could be an issue with the battery. And bear in mind as well that temperature and weather conditions will have a bearing on the battery's capacity and its ability to hold a charge. So on cold, frosty mornings, the battery can actually be 20% or more less efficient than it is on a warmer day. So it could just be a case of the batteries just been limping through in the summertime. And as you're exposed to the winter conditions, there's just not enough capacity within the battery. So charging the battery up fully is normally enough to get you through this period of time where it's starting to lose current. But you've probably got a problem there. There's a problem there with the battery. But what are the actual causes of a battery draining overnight? So next, we're going to look at how to diagnose this problem, how to find out what circuits are in your car that are draining that battery very, very slowly overnight. And if you notice anything abnormal by doing that, that's the thing that you need to address. And that could well be the cause. And that's particularly the case if you've just replaced the battery. If you know you've got a good quality battery in the car, then it's going to be a parasitic drain or parasitic draw from another component within the car. So how do you measure the parasitic draw of the car? Well, you need to really disconnect the negative terminal of the battery. So a lot of modern cars, the gearbox settings and the ECU itself will generally store the fuel trim and just make sure everything is running smoothly based on the last hundred miles or so of driving. If you reset the battery, it loses that. So you may notice the transmission shifting irregularly. You may notice it not burning as efficiently or starting to hunt a little. But after a hundred miles or so, that should should start to iron out, it should get its trim and its settings back. So on a lot of modern cars, as soon as you disconnect the battery, the electronics inside the car will just throw a hissy fit. So don't be surprised if you start to see warning lights and errors coming up on the dashboard. Generally, in most cases, these will clear after about 10 minutes of driving. The car basically needs to re-establish what is normal. So the way you turn the wheel fully to the left, fully to the right, and putting the windows fully up and fully down will just show the car where the limits are. And then these warning lights tend to disappear and all the systems that have been shut down because it's panic that it's forgotten all of the settings will kick back into life and it'll be as good as new. But do check your manual. It's probably got some advice there to disconnecting the battery. It's a lot less involved than swapping to a different type of battery. You don't have to get it recoded and everything. But disconnecting the battery will generally upset the electronics in a modern car and it will need to be given a little bit of time just to re-establish the baseline so it's happy again. And if you've logged error codes, it's worth getting some sort of reset tool and just wiping out those error codes code so you can start afresh and any new error codes that pop up will help you to determine where there is a problem in your car. So don't be concerned if the car is not behaving quite as well as it was before you disconnected the battery. So just disconnecting the negative terminal of the battery, it's safer to do the negative than the positive. You really want to connect a voltmeter between the negative of the car and the battery terminal. So it's actually forming a bridge between the circuit in the car and the battery, you can actually measure how many milliamps is actually flowing. So obviously the connectors within the voltmeter are going to be much less sturdy than those in the car. So you don't want to be starting the car or running serious voltage through. So check that the heaters and all the components in the car are actually turned off before you do this. So assuming now everything in the car is switched off, you've got your voltmeter reading milliamps and it's measuring the current that's being drawn. So around about 50 milliamps, that's generally normal. Different cars obviously have different power requirements, but a car with an alarm system and a, a modern electronic system within it can draw anything up to 50 milliamps. So if you've got a drain above that with everything off, ignition off, then that 
could indicate there is a problem with parasitic drawers somewhere in the car. Now what you have to do is a little bit of detective work, a little bit of trial and error. So you really want to isolate each of the circuits in the car and just see if that's caused this abnormal draw in milliamps to drop down to those normal levels around about the 30 to 50 milliamps level. So to do that, you just pull out the fuse. So obviously start off with the most likely circuits first. So you may have a car alarm immobilizer circuit, the lights, the courtesy light, the car radio, the car entertainment, and then start moving on to the other more serious circuits within the car just to see if there's a parasitic draw there. So when you've pulled one fuse out, check the current draw at the voltmeter again. And if that has dropped, then you've probably found the culprit. So it could be a short, it could be a bad component. It just could be something that's not switching off properly. So just systematically working through the fuse box can help you to diagnose where that parasitic draw is happening. So most workshop manuals and even fuse boxes within the car will tell you which circuit is attached, which fuse. The fuses are obviously graded to blow at different load conditions. So we'll start off with the smaller, the lower load circuits first and then work your way up to the larger load circuits. If that all checks out and there's no circuit that's particularly causing a drain, don't rule out human error. It's so easy to leave an interior light on, a courtesy light on, leave the radio running. Most modern cars have got some kind of system that will detect these stupid things that humans do and just shut them off if the car has been parked up for a period of time. But some cars don't have that feature and they don't protect the car's battery from idiot. So don't rule out the possibility. The most common thing that I see is people leaving a rear heater on or the mirror heaters without spotting it. In some modern cars, there's no indicator to show that these circuits are actually running other than the subtle position of the switch that actually controls these devices. Just work through all of the switches on the car, including the mirror adjusters, the mirror heaters, and those things you don't use very often, and just make sure that they're all switched to the off position. So hopefully this video has just helped you to drill down the possibilities, and hopefully you've isolated the problem with that parasitic drawer that's draining the battery overnight. Let me know in the comments what your experience has been. What did you find out the problem to be? What do you suspect it's going to be? and pass on your experience so me and the readers and viewers of our website and this channel can improve their knowledge and understanding of this very, very popular problem. So thanks for watching. Please boot the like button because that really does help us to get out there. And I've lined this video up for you to help you to get the most out of your car and to keep it running reliably. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in this next video.